A global catastrophic risk is a hypothetical future event which could damage human well-being on a global scale, even crippling or destroying modern civilization. An event that could cause human extinction or permanently and drastically curtail humanity's potential is known as an existential risk. Potential global catastrophic risks include anthropogenic risks, caused by humans, technology, governance, climate change, and natural or external risks. Examples of technology risks are hostile artificial intelligence and destructive biotechnology or nanotechnology. Insufficient or malign global governance creates risks in the social and political domain, such as a global war, including nuclear holocaust, bioterrorism using genetically modified organisms, cyberterrorism destroying critical infrastructure like the electrical grid, or the failure to manage a natural pandemic. Problems and risks in the domain of Earth system governance include global warming, environmental degradation, including extinction of species, famine as a result of non-equitable resource distribution, human overpopulation, crop failures and non-sustainable agriculture. Examples of non-anthropogenic risks are an asteroid impact event, a supervolcanic eruption, a lethal gamma-ray burst, a geomagnetic storm destroying electronic equipment, natural long-term climate change, or hostile extraterrestrial life. <laughs> Classifications Topic: Global catastrophic vs existential. Philosopher Nick Bostrom classifies risks according to their scope and intensity. A global catastrophic risk is any risk that is at least global in scope and is not subjectively imperceptible in intensity. Those that are at least transgenerational affecting all future generations in scope and terminal in intensity are classified as existential risks while a global catastrophic risk may kill the vast majority of life on earth humanity could still potentially recover an existential risk on the other hand is one that either destroys humanity and presumably all but the most rudimentary species of non-human life forms and or plant life entirely or at least prevents any chance of civilization recovering Bostrom considers existential risks to be far more significant. Similarly, in Catastrophe, Risk and Response, Richard Posner singles out and groups together events that bring about utter overthrow or ruin on a global, rather than a local or regional scale. Posner singles out such events as worthy of special attention on cost-benefit grounds because they could directly or indirectly jeopardize the survival of the human race as a whole. Posner's events include meteor impacts, runaway global warming, gray goo, bioterrorism, and particle accelerator accidents. Researchers experience difficulty in studying near-human extinction directly, since humanity has never been destroyed before. While this does not mean that it will not be in the future, it does make modeling existential risks difficult, due in part to survivorship bias. Other classifications Bostrom identifies four types of existential risk. Bangs are sudden catastrophes, which may be accidental or deliberate. He thinks the most likely sources of bangs are malicious use of nanotechnology, nuclear war, and the possibility that the universe is a simulation that will end. Crunches are scenarios in which humanity survives but civilization is slowly destroyed. The most likely causes of this, he believes, are exhaustion of natural resources, a stable global government that prevents technological progress, or dysgenic pressures that lower average intelligence. 
shrieks are undesirable futures. For example, if a single mind enhances its powers by merging with a computer, it could dominate human civilization. Bostrom believes that this scenario is most likely, followed by flawed superintelligence and a repressive totalitarian regime. Wimpers are the gradual decline of human civilization or current values. He thinks the most likely cause would be evolution changing moral preference, followed by extraterrestrial invasion. Likelihood Some risks, such as that from asteroid impact, with a one in a million chance of causing humanity's extinction in the next century, have had their probabilities predicted using straightforward, well understood, and in principle, precise methods although even in cases like these, the exact rate of large impacts is contested. Similarly, the frequency of volcanic eruptions of sufficient magnitude to cause catastrophic climate change, similar to the Toba eruption, which may have almost caused the extinction of the human race, has been estimated at about one in every 50,000 years. The relative danger posed by other threats is much more difficult to calculate. Given the limitations of ordinary calculation and modeling, expert elicitation is frequently used instead to obtain probability estimates. In 2008, an informal survey of experts on different global catastrophic risks at the Global Catastrophic Risk Conference at the University of Oxford suggested a 19% chance of human extinction by the year 2100. The conference report cautions that the results should be taken with a grain of salt. Table Source, Future of Humanity Institute, 2008, the 2016 annual report by the Global Challenges Foundation estimates that an average American is more than five times more likely to die during a human extinction event than in a car crash. There are significant methodological challenges in estimating these risks with precision. Most attention has been given to risks to human civilization over the next 100 years, but forecasting for this length of time is difficult. The types of threats posed by nature may prove relatively constant, though new risks could be discovered. Anthropogenic threats, however, are likely to change dramatically with the development of new technology. While volcanoes have been a threat throughout history, nuclear weapons have only been an issue since the 20th century. Historically, the ability of experts to predict the future over these timescales has proved very limited. Man-made threats such as nuclear war or nanotechnology are harder to predict than natural threats, due to the inherent methodological difficulties in the social sciences. In general, it is hard to estimate the magnitude of the risk from this or other dangers, especially as both international relations and technology can change rapidly. Existential risks pose unique challenges to prediction, even more than other long-term events, because of observation selection effects. Unlike with most events, the failure of a complete extinction event to occur in the past is not evidence against their likelihood in the future, because every world that has experienced such an extinction event has no observers, so regardless of their frequency, no civilization observes existential risks in its history. These anthropic issues can be avoided by looking at evidence that does not have such selection effects, such as asteroid impact craters on the Moon, or directly evaluating the likely impact of new technology. In addition to known and tangible risks, unforeseeable black swan extinction events may occur, presenting an additional methodological problem. Moral importance of existential risk Some scholars have strongly favored reducing existential risk on the grounds that it greatly benefits future generations. 
Derek Parfit argues that extinction would be a great loss because our descendants could potentially survive for 4 billion years before the expansion of the Sun makes the Earth uninhabitable. Nick Bostrom argues that there is even greater potential in colonizing space. If future humans colonize space, they may be able to support a very large number of people on other planets, potentially lasting for trillions of years. Therefore, reducing existential risk by even a small amount would have a very significant impact on the expected number of people who will exist in the future. Exponential discounting might make these future benefits much less significant. However, Jason Matheny has argued that such discounting is inappropriate when assessing the value of existential risk reduction. Some economists have discussed the importance of global catastrophic risks, though not existential risks. Martin Weitzman argues that most of the expected economic damage from climate change may come from the small chance that warming greatly exceeds the mid-range expectations, resulting in catastrophic damage. Richard Posner has argued that we are doing far too little, in general, about small, hard to estimate risks of large scale catastrophes. Numerous cognitive biases can influence people's judgment of the importance of existential risks, including scope insensitivity, hyperbolic discounting, availability heuristic, the conjunction fallacy, the effect heuristic, and the overconfidence effect. Scope insensitivity influences how bad people people consider the extinction of the human race to be. For example, when people are motivated to donate money to altruistic causes, the quantity they are willing to give does not increase linearly with the magnitude of the issue. People are roughly as concerned about 200,000 birds getting stuck in oil as they are about 2,000. Similarly, people are often more concerned about threats to individuals than to larger groups. There are economic reasons that can explain why so little effort is going into existential risk reduction. It is a global good, so even if a large nation decreases it, that nation will only enjoy a small fraction of the benefit of doing so. Furthermore, the vast majority of the benefits may be enjoyed by far future generations, and though these quadrillions of future people would in theory perhaps be willing to pay massive sums for existential risk reduction, no mechanism for such a transaction exists. <laughs> Potential sources of risk Some sources of catastrophic risk are natural, such as meteor impacts or supervolcanoes. Some of these have caused mass extinctions in the past. On the other hand, some risks are man-made, such as global warming, environmental degradation, engineered pandemics and nuclear war. Anthropogenic. The Cambridge Project at Cambridge University states that the greatest threats to the human species are man made, they are artificial intelligence, global warming, nuclear war, and rogue biotechnology. The Future of Humanity Institute also states that human extinction is more likely to result from anthropogenic causes than natural causes. Artificial intelligence It has been suggested that learning computers that rapidly become superintelligent may take unforeseen actions, or that robots would outcompete humanity one technological singularity scenario. Because of its exceptional scheduling and organizational capability and the range of novel technologies it could develop, it is possible that the first Earth superintelligence to emerge could rapidly become matchless and unrivaled, conceivably it would be able to bring about almost any possible outcome, and be able to foil virtually any attempt that threatened to prevent it achieving its objectives. 
it could eliminate, wiping out if it chose, any other challenging rival intellects, alternatively it might manipulate or persuade them to change their behavior towards its own interests, or it may merely obstruct their attempts at interference. In Bostrom's book, Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, Strategies, he defines this as the control problem. Physicist Stephen Hawking, Microsoft founder Bill Gates and SpaceX founder Elon Musk have echoed these concerns, with Hawking theorizing that this could "...spell the end of the human race." In 2009, the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence AAAI hosted a conference to discuss whether computers and robots might be able to acquire any sort of autonomy, and how much these abilities might pose a threat or hazard. They noted that some robots have acquired various forms of semi-autonomy, including being able to find power sources on their own and being able to independently choose targets to attack with weapons. They also noted that some computer viruses can evade elimination and have achieved cockroach intelligence. They noted that self-awareness as depicted in science fiction is probably unlikely, but that there were other potential hazards and pitfalls. Various media sources and scientific groups have noted separate trends in differing areas which might together result in greater robotic functionalities and autonomy, and which pose some inherent concerns. A survey of AI experts estimated that the chance of human-level machine learning having an extremely bad e.g., human extinction. Long-term effect on humanity is 5%. A survey by the Future of Humanity Institute estimated a 5% probability of extinction by superintelligence by 2100. Eliezer Yudkowsky believes that risks from artificial intelligence are harder to predict than any other known risks due to bias from anthropomorphism. Since people base their judgments of artificial intelligence on their own experience, he claims that they underestimate the potential power of AI. Biotechnology Biotechnology can pose a global catastrophic risk in the form of bioengineered organisms viruses, bacteria, fungi, plants or animals. In many cases the organism will be a pathogen of humans, livestock, crops or other organisms we depend upon e.g. pollinators or gut bacteria. However, any organism able to catastrophically disrupt ecosystem functions, e.g. highly competitive weeds, outcompeting essential crops, poses a biotechnology risk. A biotechnology catastrophe may be caused by accidentally releasing a genetically engineered organism from controlled environments, by the planned release of such an organism which then turns out to have unforeseen and catastrophic interactions with essential natural or agro-ecosystems, or by intentional usage of biological agents in biological warfare, bioterrorism attacks. Pathogens may be intentionally or unintentionally genetically modified to change virulence and other characteristics. For example, a group of Australian researchers unintentionally changed characteristics of the mousebox virus while trying to develop a virus to sterilise rodents. The modified virus became highly lethal even in vaccinated and naturally resistant mice. The technological means to genetically modify virus characteristics are likely to become more widely available in the future if not properly regulated. Terrorist applications of biotechnology have historically been infrequent. To what extent this is due to a lack of capabilities or motivation is not resolved. However, given current development, more risk from novel, engineered pathogens is to be expected in the future. Exponential growth has been observed in the biotechnology sector, and Noun and Chiba predict that this will lead to major increases in biotechnological capabilities in the coming decades. 
They argue that risks from biological warfare and bioterrorism are distinct from nuclear and chemical threats because biological pathogens are easier to mass produce and their production is hard to control, especially as the technological capabilities are becoming available even to individual users. A survey by the Future of Humanity Institute estimated a 2% probability of extinction from engineered pandemics by 2100. Noun and Chiba propose three categories of measures to reduce risks from biotechnology and natural pandemics regulation or prevention of potentially dangerous research, improved recognition of outbreaks, and developing facilities to mitigate disease outbreaks, e.g., better and or more widely distributed vaccines. Cyber attack Cyber attacks have the potential to destroy everything from personal data to electric grids. Christine Peterson, co-founder and past president of the Foresight Institute, believes a cyber attack on electric grids has the potential to be a catastrophic risk. <laughs> <laughs> Global warming Global warming refers to the warming caused by human technology since the 19th century or earlier. Projections of future climate change suggest further global warming, sea level rise, and an increase in the frequency and severity of some extreme weather events and weather-related disasters. Effects of global warming include loss of biodiversity, stresses to existing food-producing systems, increased spread of known infectious diseases such as malaria, and rapid mutation of microorganisms. In November 2017, a statement by 15,364 scientists from 184 countries indicated that increasing levels of greenhouse gases from use of fossil fuels, human population growth, deforestation, and overuse of land for agricultural production, particularly by farming ruminants for meat consumption, are trending in ways that forecast an increase in human misery over coming decades. Environmental disaster An environmental or ecological disaster, such as world crop failure and collapse of ecosystem services, could be induced by the present trends of overpopulation, economic development, and non-sustainable agriculture. Most environmental scenarios involve one or more of the following – Holocene extinction event, scarcity of water that could lead to approximately one half of the Earth's population being without safe drinking water, pollinator decline, overfishing, massive deforestation, desertification, climate change, or massive water pollution episodes. Detected in the early 21st century, a threat in this direction is colony collapse disorder, a phenomenon that might foreshadow the imminent extinction of the western honeybee. As the bee plays a vital role in pollination, its extinction would severely disrupt the food chain. An October 2017 report published in The Lancet stated that toxic air, water, soils, and workplaces were collectively responsible for 9 million deaths worldwide in 2015, particularly from air pollution which was linked to deaths by increasing susceptibility to non-infectious diseases, such as heart disease, stroke, and lung cancer. The report warned that the pollution crisis was exceeding the envelope on the amount of pollution the Earth can carry", and threatens the continuing survival of human societies. <inaudible> <inaudible> Mineral resource exhaustion Romanian-American economist Nicholas Georgescu Rogan, a progenitor in economics and the paradigm founder of ecological economics, has argued that the carrying capacity of Earth—that is, Earth's capacity to sustain human populations and consumption levels, 
is bound to decrease sometime in the future as Earth's finite stock of mineral resources is presently being extracted and put to use, and consequently, that the world economy as a whole is heading towards an inevitable future collapse, leading to the demise of human civilization itself. Ecological economist and steady state theorist Herman Daly, a student of George Skurogan, has propounded the same argument by asserting that all we can do is to avoid wasting the limited capacity of creation to support present and future life on Earth. Ever since George Skurogan and Daly published these views, various scholars in the field have been discussing the existential impossibility of allocating Earth's finite stock of mineral resources evenly among an unknown number of present and future generations. This number of generations is likely to remain unknown to us, as there is no way—or only little way— of knowing in advance if or when mankind will ultimately face extinction. In effect, any conceivable intertemporal allocation of the stock will inevitably end up with universal economic decline at some future point. <laughs> Experimental technology accident Nick Bostrom suggested that in the pursuit of knowledge, humanity might inadvertently create a device that could destroy Earth and the Solar System. Investigations in nuclear and high-energy physics could create unusual conditions with catastrophic consequences. For example, scientists worried that the first nuclear test might ignite the atmosphere. More recently, others worried that the RHIC or the Large Hadron Collider might start a chain reaction global disaster involving black holes, strangelets, or false vacuum states. These particular concerns have been refuted, but the general concern remains. Biotechnology could lead to the creation of a pandemic, chemical warfare could be taken to an extreme, nanotechnology could lead to grey goo in which out-of-control self-replicating robots consume all living matter on Earth while building more of themselves—in both cases, either deliberately or by accident. Nanotechnology. <inaudible> 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 Many nanoscale technologies are in development or currently in use. The only one that appears to pose a significant global catastrophic risk is molecular manufacturing, a technique that would make it possible to build complex structures at atomic precision. Molecular manufacturing requires significant advances in nanotechnology, but once achieved could produce highly advanced products at low costs and in large quantities in nanofactories of desktop proportions. When nanofactories gain the ability to produce other nanofactories, production may only be limited by relatively abundant factors such as input materials, energy, and software. Molecular manufacturing could be used to cheaply produce, among many other products, highly advanced, durable weapons. Being equipped with compact computers and motors these could be increasingly autonomous and have a large range of capabilities. Chris Phoenix and Treader classify catastrophic risks posed by nanotechnology into three categories from augmenting the development of other technologies such as AI and biotechnology by enabling mass production of potentially dangerous products that cause risk dynamics such as arms races depending on how they are used from uncontrolled self-perpetuating processes with destructive effects several researchers state that the bulk of risk from nanotechnology comes from the potential to lead to war arms races and destructive global government Several reasons have been suggested why the availability of nanotech weaponry may with significant likelihood lead to unstable arms races compared to e.g. nuclear arms races. A large number of players may be tempted to enter the race since the threshold for doing so is low. 
the ability to make weapons with molecular manufacturing will be cheap and easy to hide. Therefore, lack of insight into the other party's capabilities can tempt players to arm out of caution or to launch preemptive strikes. Molecular manufacturing may reduce dependency on international trade, a potential peace promoting factor. Wars of aggression may pose a smaller economic threat to the aggressor since manufacturing is cheap and humans may not be needed on the battlefield, since self regulation by all state and non state actors seems hard to achieve. Measures to mitigate war related risks have mainly been proposed in the area of international cooperation. International infrastructure may be expanded, giving more sovereignty to the international level. This could help coordinate efforts for arms control. International institutions dedicated specifically to nanotechnology perhaps analogously to the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA or general arms control may also be designed. One may also jointly make differential technological progress on defensive technologies, a policy that players should usually favor. The Center for Responsible Nanotechnology also suggests some technical restrictions. Improved transparency regarding technological capabilities may be another important facilitator for arms control. Grey goo is another catastrophic scenario, which was proposed by Eric Drexler in his 1986 book Engines of Creation and has been a theme in mainstream media and fiction. This scenario involves tiny self-replicating robots that consume the entire biosphere using it as a source of energy and building blocks. Nowadays, however, nanotech experts—including Drexler—discredit the scenario. According to Phoenix, a so-called gray goo could only be the product of a deliberate and difficult engineering process, not an accident. Topic. Warfare and mass destruction The scenarios that have been explored most frequently are nuclear warfare and doomsday devices. Although the probability of a nuclear war per year is slim, Professor Martin Hellman has described it as inevitable in the long run, unless the probability approaches zero, inevitably there will come a day when civilization's luck runs out. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, U.S. President John F. Kennedy estimated the odds of nuclear war at "...somewhere between one out of three and even." The United States and Russia have a combined arsenal of 14,700 nuclear weapons, and there is an estimated total of 15,700 nuclear weapons in existence worldwide. Beyond nuclear, other military threats to humanity include biological warfare BW. By contrast, chemical warfare, while able to create multiple local catastrophes, is unlikely to create a global one. Nuclear war could yield unprecedented human death tolls and habitat destruction. Detonating large numbers of nuclear weapons would have an immediate, short-term and long-term effects on the climate, causing cold weather and reduced sunlight and photosynthesis that may generate significant upheaval in advanced civilizations. However, while popular perception sometimes takes nuclear war as the end of the world, experts assign low probability to human extinction from nuclear war. In 1982, Brian Martin estimated that a U.S.-Soviet nuclear exchange might kill 400 to 450 million directly, mostly in the United States, Europe and Russia, and maybe several hundred million more through follow-up consequences in those same areas. A survey by the Future of Humanity Institute estimated a 4% probability of extinction from warfare by 2100, with a 1% chance of extinction from nuclear warfare. <laughs> World population and agricultural crisis 
The 20th century saw a rapid increase in human population due to medical developments and massive increases in agricultural productivity such as the Green Revolution. Between 1950 and 1984, as the Green Revolution transformed agriculture around the globe, world grain production increased by 250%. The Green Revolution in agriculture helped food production to keep pace with worldwide population growth or actually enabled population growth. The energy for the Green Revolution was provided by fossil fuels in the form of fertilizers natural gas, pesticides oil, and hydrocarbon-fueled irrigation. David Pimentel, professor of ecology and agriculture at Cornell University, and Mario Giampietro, senior researcher at the National Research Institute on Food and Nutrition (INRAN), place in their 1994 study Food, Land, Population and the U.S. Economy the maximum U.S. population for a sustainable economy at 200 million. To achieve a sustainable economy and avert disaster, the United States must reduce its population by at least one third, and world population will have to be reduced by two thirds, says the study. The authors of this study believe that the mentioned agricultural crisis will begin to have an effect on the world after 2020, and will become critical after 2050. Geologist Dale Allen Pfeiffer claims that coming decades could see spiraling food prices without relief and massive starvation on a global level such as never experienced before. Wheat is humanity's third most produced cereal. Extant fungal infections such as UG99, a kind of stem rust, can cause 100% crop losses in most modern varieties. Little or no treatment is possible and infection spreads on the wind. Should the world's large grain producing areas become infected, the ensuing crisis in wheat availability would lead to price spikes and shortages in other food products. Non-anthropogenic Topic. Asteroid impact Several asteroids have collided with Earth in recent geological history. The Chicxulub asteroid, for example, is theorized to have caused the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs 66 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous. No sufficiently large asteroid currently exists in an Earth-crossing orbit, however, a comet of sufficient size to cause human extinction could impact the Earth, though the annual probability may be less than 10-8. Geoscientist Brian Toon estimates that a 60-mile meteorite would be large enough to «incinerate everybody». Asteroids with around a 1 km diameter have impacted the Earth on average once every 500,000 years, these are probably too small to pose an extinction risk, but might kill billions of people. Larger asteroids are less common. Small near-Earth asteroids are regularly observed and can impact anywhere on the Earth injuring local populations. As of 2013, SpaceGuard estimates it has identified 95% of all NEOs over 1 km in size. In April 2018, the B612 Foundation reported, It's a 100% certain we'll be hit by a devastating asteroid, but we're not 100% sure when. Also in 2018, physicist Stephen Hawking, in his final book Brief Answers to the Big Questions, considered an asteroid collision to be the biggest threat to the planet. In June 2018, the U.S. National Science and Technology Council warned that America is unprepared for an asteroid impact event, and has developed and released the National Near Earth Object Preparedness Strategy Action Plan to better prepare. According to expert testimony in the United States Congress in 2013, NASA would require at least five years of preparation before a mission to intercept an asteroid could be launched. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Extraterrestrial invasion. Extraterrestrial life could invade Earth either to exterminate and supplant human life, enslave it under a colonial system, steal the planet's resources, or destroy the planet altogether. Although evidence of alien life has never been documented, scientists such as Carl Sagan have postulated that the existence of extraterrestrial life is very likely. In 1969, the Extraterrestrial Exposure Law was added to the United States Code of Federal Regulations, Title 14, Section 1211, in response to the possibility of biological contamination resulting from the U.S. Apollo space program. It was removed in 1991. Scientists consider such a scenario technically possible, but unlikely. An article in the New York Times discussed the possible threats for humanity of intentionally sending messages aimed at extraterrestrial life into the cosmos in the context of the SETI efforts. Several renowned public figures such as Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk have argued against sending such messages on the grounds that extraterrestrial civilizations with technology are probably far more advanced than humanity and could pose an existential threat to humanity. <laughs> Natural climate change Climate change refers to a lasting change in the Earth's climate. The climate has ranged from ice ages to warmer periods when palm trees grew in Antarctica. It has been hypothesized that there was also a period called, "...snowball Earth", when all the oceans were covered in a layer of ice. These global climatic changes occurred slowly, prior to the rise of human civilization about 10,000 years ago near the end of the last major ice age when the climate became more stable. However, abrupt climate change on the decade time scale has occurred regionally. Since civilization originated during a period of stable climate, a natural variation into a new climate regime colder or hotter, could pose a threat to civilization. In the history of the Earth, many ice ages are known to have occurred. More ice ages will be possible at an interval of 40,000 to 100,000 years. An ice age would have a serious impact on civilization because vast areas of land mainly in North America, Europe, and Asia could become uninhabitable. It would still be possible to live in the tropical regions, but with possible loss of humidity and water. Currently, the world is in an interglacial period within a much older glacial event. The last glacial expansion ended about 10,000 years ago, and all civilizations evolved later than this. Scientists do not predict that a natural ice age will occur any time soon. This may be due to man-made emissions potentially delaying the possible onset or another ice age for at least another 50,000 years. Cosmic threats A number of astronomical threats have been identified. Massive objects, e.g. a star, large planet or black hole, could be catastrophic if a close encounter occurred in the solar system. In April 2008, it was announced that two simulations of long-term planetary movement, one at the Paris Observatory and the other at the University of California, Santa Cruz, indicate a 1% chance that Mercury's orbit could be made unstable by Jupiter's gravitational pull sometime during the lifespan of the Sun. Were this to happen, the simulations suggest a collision with Earth could be one of four possible outcomes the others being Mercury colliding with the Sun, colliding with Venus, or being ejected from the Solar System altogether. 
If Mercury were to collide with Earth, all life on Earth could be obliterated entirely. An asteroid 15 km wide is believed to have caused the extinction of the non avian dinosaurs, whereas Mercury is 4,879 km in diameter. Another cosmic threat is a gamma ray burst, typically produced by a supernova when a star collapses inward on itself and then bounces outward in a massive explosion. Under certain circumstances, these events are thought to produce massive bursts of gamma radiation emanating outward from the axis of rotation of the star. If such an event were to occur oriented towards the Earth, the massive amounts of gamma radiation could significantly affect the Earth's atmosphere and pose an existential threat to all life. Such a gamma ray burst may have been the cause of the Ordovician Silurian extinction events. Neither this scenario nor the destabilization of Mercury's orbit are likely in the foreseeable future. If the Solar System were to pass through a dark nebula, a cloud of cosmic dust, severe global climate change would occur, a powerful solar flare or solar superstorm, which is a drastic and unusual decrease or increase in the Sun's power output, could have severe consequences for life on Earth. If our universe lies within a false vacuum, a a bubble of lower energy vacuum could come to exist by chance or otherwise in our universe, and catalyze the conversion of our universe to a lower energy state in a volume expanding at nearly the speed of light, destroying all that we know without forewarning. Such an occurrence is called vacuum decay. <laughs> Geomagnetic reversal the magnetic poles of the Earth shifted many times in geologic history. The duration of such a shift is still debated. Theories exist that during such times, the Earth's magnetic field would be substantially weakened, threatening civilization by allowing radiation from the Sun, especially solar wind, solar flares or cosmic radiation, to reach the surface. These theories have been somewhat discredited, as statistical analysis shows no evidence for a correlation between past reversals and past extinctions. <laughs> <laughs> Global pandemic Numerous historical examples of pandemics had a devastating effect on a large number of people. The present, unprecedented scale and speed of human movement make it more difficult than ever to contain an epidemic through local quarantines. A global pandemic has become a realistic threat to human civilization. Naturally evolving pathogens will ultimately develop an upper limit to their virulence. Pathogens with the highest virulence, quickly killing their hosts reduce their chances of spread the infection to new hosts or carriers. This simple model predicts that, if virulence and transmission are not genetically linked, pathogens will evolve towards low virulence and rapid transmission. However, this is not necessarily a safeguard against a global catastrophe, for the following reasons 1. The fitness advantage of limited virulence is primarily a function of a limited number of hosts. Any pathogen with a high virulence, high transmission rate and long incubation time may have already caused a catastrophic pandemic before ultimately virulence is limited through natural selection. 2. In models where virulence level and rate of transmission are related, high levels of virulence can evolve. Virulence is instead limited by the existence of complex populations of hosts with different susceptibilities to infection, or by some hosts being geographically isolated. The size of the host population and competition between different strains of pathogens can also alter virulence. 3. A pathogen that infects humans as a secondary host and primarily infects another species a zoonosis has no constraints on its virulence in people, since the accidental secondary infections do not affect its evolution. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <inaudible> Volcanism. A geological event such as massive flood basalt, volcanism, or the eruption of a supervolcano could lead to a so-called volcanic winter, similar to a nuclear winter. One such event, the Toba eruption, occurred in Indonesia about 71,500 years ago. According to the Toba catastrophe theory, the event may have reduced human populations to only a few tens of thousands of individuals. Yellowstone caldera is another such supervolcano, having undergone 142 or more caldera forming eruptions in the past 17 million years. A massive volcano eruption would eject extraordinary volumes of volcanic dust, toxic and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere with serious effects on global climate towards extreme global cooling, volcanic winter if short term, and ice age if long term or global warming if greenhouse gases were to prevail. When the supervolcano at Yellowstone last erupted 640,000 years ago, the thinnest layers of the ash ejected from the caldera spread over most of the United States west of the Mississippi River and part of northeastern Mexico. The magma covered much of what is now Yellowstone National Park and extended beyond, covering much of the ground from Yellowstone River in the east to the Idaho Falls in the west, with some of the flows extending north beyond Mammoth Springs. According to a recent study, if the Yellowstone caldera erupted again as a supervolcano, an ash layer 1 to 3 mm thick could be deposited as far away as New York, enough to reduce traction on roads and runways, short out electrical transformers and cause respiratory problems." There would be centimeters of thickness over much of the U.S. Midwest, enough to disrupt crops and livestock, especially if it happened at a critical time in the growing season. The worst affected city would likely be Billings, Montana, population 109,000, which the model predicted would be covered with ash estimated as 1.03 to 1.8 meters thick. The main long term effect is through global climate change, which reduces the temperature globally by about 5 to 15 degrees Celsius for a decade, together with the direct effects of the deposits of ash on their crops. A large supervolcano like Toba would deposit one or two meters thickness of ash over an area of several million square kilometers. 1,000 cubic kilometers is equivalent to a one meter thickness of ash spread over a million square kilometers. If that happened in some densely populated agricultural area, such as India, it could destroy one or two seasons of crops for two billion people. However, Yellowstone shows no signs of a supereruption at present, and it is not certain that a future supereruption will occur there. Research published in 2011 finds evidence that massive volcanic eruptions caused massive coal combustion, supporting models for significant generation of greenhouse gases. Researchers have suggested that massive volcanic eruptions through coal beds in Siberia would generate significant greenhouse gases and cause a runaway greenhouse effect. Massive eruptions can also throw enough pyroclastic debris and other material into the atmosphere to partially block out the sun and cause a volcanic winter, as happened on a smaller scale in 1816 following the eruption of Mount Tambora, the so-called year without a summer. Such an eruption might cause the immediate deaths of millions of people several hundred miles from the eruption, and perhaps billions of deaths worldwide, due to the failure of the monsoon, resulting in major crop failures causing starvation on a profound scale. A much more speculative concept is the Vernshot, a hypothetical volcanic eruption caused by the buildup of gas deep underneath a craton. Such an event may be forceful enough to launch an extreme amount of material from the crust and mantle into a sub-orbital trajectory. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Proposed mitigation. 
Planetary management and respecting planetary boundaries have been proposed as approaches to preventing ecological catastrophes. Within the scope of these approaches, the field of geoengineering encompasses the deliberate large-scale engineering and manipulation of the planetary environment to combat or counteract anthropogenic changes in atmospheric chemistry. Space colonization is a proposed alternative to improve the odds of surviving an extinction scenario. Solutions of this scope may require megascale engineering. Food storage has been proposed globally, but the monetary cost would be high. Furthermore, it would likely contribute to the current millions of deaths per year due to malnutrition. Some survivalists stock survival retreats with multiple year food supplies. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault is buried 400 feet 120 meters inside a mountain on an island in the Arctic. It is designed to hold 2.5 billion seeds from more than 100 countries as a precaution to preserve the world's crops. The surrounding rock is minus 6 degrees Celsius, 21 degrees Fahrenheit as of 2015, but the vault is kept at minus 18 degrees Celsius, 0 degrees Fahrenheit by refrigerators powered by locally sourced coal. More speculatively, if society continues to function and if the biosphere remains habitable, calorie needs for the present human population might in theory be met during an extended absence of sunlight given sufficient advance planning. Conjectured solutions include growing mushrooms on the dead plant biomass left in the wake of the catastrophe, converting cellulose to sugar, or feeding natural gas to methane-digesting bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> global catastrophic risks and global governance Insufficient global governance creates risks in the social and political domain, but the governance mechanisms develop more slowly than technological and social change. There are concerns from governments, the private sector, as well as the general public about the lack of governance mechanisms to efficiently deal with risks, negotiate and adjudicate between diverse and conflicting interests. This is further underlined by an understanding of the interconnectedness of global systemic risks. Topic: Organizations. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, est, 1945, is one of the oldest global risk organizations, founded after the public became alarmed by the potential of atomic warfare in the aftermath of World War II. It studies risks associated with nuclear war and energy and famously maintains the Doomsday Clock established in 1947. The Foresight Institute est, 1986, examines the risks of nanotechnology and its benefits. It was one of the earliest organizations to study the unintended consequences of otherwise harmless technology gone haywire at a global scale. It was founded by K. Eric Drexler who postulated, Grey Goo. Beginning after 2000, a growing number of scientists, philosophers and tech billionaires created organizations devoted to studying global risks both inside and outside of academia. Independent non-governmental organizations (NGOs) include the Machine Intelligence Research Institute (EST) 2000, which aims to reduce the risk of a catastrophe caused by artificial intelligence with donors including Peter Thiel and Jed Mc Caleb. The Nuclear Threat Initiative est, 2001, seeks to reduce global threats from nuclear, biological and chemical threats, and containment of damage after an event. It maintains a Nuclear Material Security Index. The Lifeboat Foundation est, 2009, funds research into preventing a technological catastrophe. Most of the research money funds projects at universities. The Global Catastrophic Risk Institute est, 2011, is a think tank for catastrophic risk. 
It is funded by the NGO Social and Environmental Entrepreneurs. The Global Challenges Foundation Est, 2012, based in Stockholm and founded by Laszlo Zombatforvi, releases a yearly report on the state of global risks. The Future of Life Institute Est, 2014, aims to support research and initiatives for safeguarding life considering new technologies and challenges facing humanity. Elon Musk is one of its biggest donors. University based organizations include the Future of Humanity Institute, Est, 2005, which researches the questions of humanity's long term future, particularly existential risk. It was founded by Nick Bostrom and is based at Oxford University. The Centre for the Study of Existential Risk is a Cambridge-based organisation which studies four major technological risks, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, global warming and warfare. All are man-made risks, as Hugh Price explained to the AFP news agency. It seems a reasonable prediction that sometime in this or the next century intelligence will escape from the constraints of biology." He added that when this happens, "...we're no longer the smartest things around," and will risk being at the mercy of "...machines that are not malicious, but machines whose interests don't include us." Stephen Hawking was an acting advisor. The Millennium Alliance for Humanity and the Biosphere is a Stanford University-based organization focusing on many issues related to global catastrophe by bringing together members of academic in the humanities. It was founded by Paul Ehrlich among others. Stanford University also has the Center for International Security and Cooperation focusing on political cooperation to reduce global catastrophic risk. Other risk assessment groups are based in or are part of governmental organizations. The World Health Organization WHO, includes a division called the Global Alert and Response which monitors and responds to global epidemic crisis. GAR helps member states with training and coordination of response to epidemics. The United States Agency for International Development USAID has its Emerging Pandemic Threats Program which aims to prevent and contain naturally generated pandemics at their source. The Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory has a division called the Global Security Principal Directorate which researches on behalf of the government issues such as biosecurity and counterterrorism. Topic See also Topic Notes Topic. Further reading Bostrom, Nick March 2002. "'Existential Risks – Analyzing Human Extinction Scenarios and Related Hazards". Journal of Evolution and Technology. 9 1. Corey S. Powell 2000. "'20 Ways the World Could End Suddenly". Discover Magazine. Martin Rees 2004. Our Final Hour, A Scientist's Warning, How Terror, Error, and Environmental Disaster Threaten Humankind's Future in This Century — On Earth and Beyond. ISBN 0-465-06863-4 Jean-François Richard 2003. High Noon 20 Global Problems, 20 Years to Solve Them ISBN 0-465-07010-8 Edward O. Wilson 2003. The Future of Life. ISBN 0-679-76811-4 Roger Maurice Bonnet and Lodewijk Woltje, Surviving 1000 Centuries Can We Do It, 2008, Springer Praxis Books
Derek Jensen, 2006, Endgame, ISBN 1-58322-730-X. Jared Diamond, Collapse, How Societies Choose to Fail or Succeed, Penguin Books, 2005 and 2011, ISBN 9780241958681. Huseman, Michael H., and Joyce A. Huseman, 2011. Technofix, Why Technology Won't Save Us or the Environment, Chapter 6, Sustainability or Collapse, New Society Publishers, Gabriola Island, British Columbia, Canada, 464 pages ISBN Joel Garrow, Radical Evolution, 2005, ISBN 978-0385509657. John A. Leslie, 1996. The End of the World, ISBN 0-415-14043-9. Meadows, 1972. The Limits to Growth ISBN 0 165 0 Joseph Tainter, 1990. The Collapse of Complex Societies, Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, UK ISBN 9780521300 Topic: External links. Existential-risk.org, a website about existential risk by Nick Bostrom. Last Days on Earth TV documentary, ABC News two-hour special edition of 2020 on seven real end of the world scenarios, wed. August 30, 2006. What a way to go. From The Guardian. Ten scientists name the biggest dangers to Earth and assess the chances they will happen. April 14, 2005. Stephen Petranik, Ten Ways the World Could End, a TED Talk. Top 10 Ways to Destroy Earth. LiveScience.com. LiveScience. Archived from the original on 1 January 2011.